Hi, welcome to our math. Today I'm doing a series of videos on solving optimization problems with the simplex method. Because this is a minimization problem, this is actually using the dual simplex method, which takes a little extra effort to set up, but the heart of the matter is going to be the same. The setup starts with taking our system of equations and making an augmented matrix. So 6, 1, 60, 2, 1, 40, 1, 1, 30. We're going to add what we're trying to minimize to our list, 6, 4, 1. Okay, what we need to do next is we need to transpose our matrix. So my first uh, column becomes my first row, 6, 1, 60. My second row becomes my second column. My third row becomes my third column. And my fourth row becomes my fourth column column. All right, now we can start setting up our simplex method. 6, 1, 60 does not represent x sub 1. It represents our first equation. So instead of setting this as my x sub 1 column, I'm going to set it up as my y sub 1 column. 6, 1, 60. My y sub 2 column is going to be 2, 1, 40. And my y sub 3 column is going to be 1, 1, 30. Because we're doing an optimization, we're actually going to make all the numbers below the line negative. Okay, instead of slack variables, we're going to do x variables. x sub 1 is 1, 0, 0. x sub 2 is 0, 1, 0. And we're not going to use z because z is the 6 and the 4. It's not the numbers below the line. So we're going to just change our variable out so we have a title for the column, w. And then we'll have our 6, our 4. And we're not putting this 1 down. That 1 represents the W. The W moved to the left of the equal sign. You always start off your simplex method with a 0 in the hole. We always start with a 0 as our starting off number. Because what we're trying to do is maximize. And we always start with the idea of the origin 0, 0, which is 0. x sub 1 is 0. x sub 2 is 0 if they're both 0 z is equal to zero. Okay, so simplex method, how it works. You look at the numbers below the line, you try to find the biggest number below the line, which in this case is this negative 60, and then we need to figure out which of the two elements, the six or the one, is our pivot element. We do that by dividing our answer column by our pivot column. Six divided by six is one, four divided by one is four. The smaller ratio is our pivot element. All right, so here we have our first simplex tableau with our pivot element found. Okay, so we're going to use this 6 to zero out the numbers below. I know in traditional matrix manipulation, we would divide through by 6 and have a 1 third, a 1 6, a 1 6. I tend to not manipulate with fractions. I figure it's enough work dealing with matrices. We can get the fractions at the end. It's still going to give us the same answer. So I'm going to take 6 times row 2 and subtract row 1 and put that into row 2. So 6 times row 2 is going to be 6, 6, 6, 0, 6, 0, 24. And minus row 1 is going to be negative 6, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 6. And when I add down, I'm going to get 0, 4, 5, negative 1, 6, 0, 18. Okay, then to get rid of the 60, I'm going to do 10 times row 1 plus row 3. 10 times row 1 is going to be 60, 20, 10, 10, 0, 0, 60. And row 3 is going to remain negative 60, negative 40, negative 30, 0, 0, 1, 0. And when I add down, I'm going to get 0, negative 20, negative 20. 10, 0, 1, 60. Okay, so we didn't change our first row, so the first row of our next tableau is going to stay 6, 2, 1, 1, 0, 0, 6. My second row is going to become this second row, this 0, 4, 5, negative 1, 6, 0, 18. And the third row is going to be 0, negative 20, negative 20, 10, 0, 1, 60. 
I made that a lot squishier than I normally make them. Okay, so this right here is my second tableau. There's still negatives below the line. There are actually two negatives below the line. And the question is, do I do the first one or I do the second one? So I am going to start with doing the first one. So I am going to pivot on this. Let's see. If I make this my pivot column and I divide my answer by my column, 6 divided by 2 is 3, 18 divided by 4 is 4.5, 3 is smaller, so the 2 will become my pivot element. So to pivot on that 2, I will take row 2 minus 2 row 1. Row 2 is going to be 0, 4, 5, negative 1, 6, 0, 18. And negative 2 row 1 is going to be negative 12, negative 4, negative 2, negative 2, 0, 0, negative 12. And when I add down, I'm going to get negative 12, 0, 3, negative 3, 6, 0, 6. Whereas I usually just leave my numbers as they are. I don't really worry about them. Because these are all divisible by 3, I will divide by 3 just to make my numbers a little bit smaller. To get rid of that negative 20, I'm going to take 10 times row 1 plus row 3 and put that into row 3. I guess I should say this is going into row 2. Okay, 10 times row 1, 60, 20, 10, 10, 0, 0, 60. Row 3, 0, negative 20, negative 20, 10, 0, 1, 60. And when I add these together, I am going to get 60, 0, negative 10, 20, 0, 1, 120. Um, with that one there, I'm just going to leave the numbers as they are. And I am going to go all the way up to the top of the page. So my first row is going to be this row. So I'm going to write it up here and then I'll show you that I wrote it. So the six, oh, sorry about that. Things moving. Six, two, one, one, zero, zero, six. My second row becomes this row, but I'm going to divide it by three. So I'm going to have a negative four, zero, one, negative one, two, zero, two. And my bottom row is going to be this 60, zero, negative 10, 20, zero, one, one, twenty. Okay. So I wrote it up just like I just said. And there she is. This is our third tableau, and I want you to notice we still have a negative below the line, which means we are not yet done, which means there's more to do. So to do this, what I'm going to do again, six divided by one is one, two divided by one is two, six divided by one is six, two divided by one is two, two is smaller. So this one right here is going to become my new pivot element. Okay, so I am going to say row one minus row two to go into row one. Row one is six, two, one, one, zero, zero, six, minus row two is four, zero, negative one, one, negative two, zero, negative two. They will add together to give me ten, two, 0, 2, negative 2, 0, 4. Okay, then to get rid of that 10, I'm going to do 10 times row 2 plus row 3 and put that into row 3. 10 times row 2 is negative 40, 0, 10, negative 10, 20, 0, 20. And row 3 is 60, 0, negative 10, 20, 0, 1, 1, 20. And when I add down, I get 20, 0, 0, 10, 20, 1, 1, 40. So my first row became 10, 
2, 0, 2, negative 2, 0, 4. I probably should divide it by 2. My second row stays negative 4, 0, 1, negative 1, 2, 0, 2. And my third row becomes 20, 0, 0, 10, 20, 1, 1, 40. Okay, so this is a unit column. I should have divided by 2, so we'll make that a 5, a 1, a 1, a negative 1, and a 2. Okay, second unit column, third unit column. So to read this, let's see, this is y sub 1, y sub 2, x sub 1, x sub 2. There's a y sub 3 in here. x sub 1, x sub 2, w. Let's check with my original columns. Okay, there's a y sub 3. So my final answer comes right here. The minimum... Is e equaling 140 at 10, 20? All right, I know you're sitting there wondering, way back at the beginning, we had two, well, on the second, let's get this all where you can see it. Okay, so here's my answer, all gotten from the bottom. X sub one is 10, X sub two is 20, and the answer is 140. Okay, so right here we had these two negative 20s. What would have happened had we decided to pivot on the five instead of pivoting on the two? Because the five is what we would have ended up pivoting on. And in all honesty, had we pivoted on the five instead, we would still have needed to do two steps, but we would have gotten the same answer. I encourage you to try that out. Try taking this problem from the second tableau. Uh, when you pivot, 6 divided by 1 is 6, 18 divided by 5 is 3.6. Try pivoting on this 5 instead of this 2. See what happens. Make sure that you get the same answer. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks!